IPF Narratives Content and Structure The IPF Narrative document shall contain the following sections Design Intent and Hazard Functional Description Process Actions Taken to Prevent Mitigate the Hazard Special Performance Requirements Reset Actions Remarks Design Intent and Hazard This section describes the intent of the design and the specific hazard the instrumented protective function IPF is intended to prevent or mitigate. It provides a detailed explanation of the potential hazardous events and the conditions under which they could occur. This section should include Description of the specific process unit and equipment involved Explanation of the hazardous event, including cause and consequence Identification of the design intent to prevent or mitigate the hazard Functional Description This section provides a detailed functional description of the IPF explaining how the function works to prevent or mitigate the identified hazard. It includes Description of the IPF operation, including logic and control elements Identification of all inputs and outputs, including sensors, logic solvers, and final elements Explanation of the sequence of operations, including normal and abnormal conditions Process actions taken to prevent, mitigate the hazard. This section outlines the specific process actions taken to prevent or mitigate the hazard. It includes detailed description of the primary and secondary actions taken by the IPF, identification of the equipment and control elements involved in each action, explanation of how each action contributes to the prevention or mitigation of the hazard. Special Performance Requirements this section details any special performance requirements for the IPF. It includes identification of specific performance criteria, such as response times, reliability, and accuracy. Explanation of how these criteria are achieved and maintained. Identification of any additional testing or maintenance requirements to ensure performance. This section describes the actions required to reset the IPF after it has been activated. It includes Identification of the reset procedure and any specific conditions that must be met before resetting. Explanation of any operator actions required to reset the IPF. Identification of any alarms or indications provided to the operator during the reset process. Remarks. This section provides any additional information or comments related to the IPF. It includes any assumptions or limitations associated with the IPF design and operation. Identification of any interfaces with other control or protection systems. Any other relevant information that may impact the performance or operation of the IPF. Detailed IPF Narrative A detailed IPF narrative shall be provided for all IPFs. The IPF narrative shall contain the following sections. Design Intent Hazard Demand Scenario Functional Description Actions Special Performance Requirements Reset Actions Remarks, additional requirements. These sections are described in detail below. Design Intent This section shall contain the description of the intent of the IPF and the hazard it is designed to prevent or mitigate. It should include the specific process unit and equipment involved, a detailed explanation of the hazardous event, including causes and potential consequences, the design intent to prevent or mitigate the hazard. Demand Scenario the demand scenario describes the conditions or events that will initiate the IPF. This section should include a description of the initiating event or condition, the process parameters that will be monitored to detect the initiating event, any specific conditions that must be met before the IPF is initiated. Functional Description This section provides a detailed functional description of the IPF, explaining how the function works to prevent or mitigate the identified hazard. It should include a description of the IPF operation, including logic and control elements, identification of all inputs and outputs, including sensors, logic solvers, and final elements, an explanation of the sequence of operations, including normal and abnormal conditions. Actions. This section outlines the specific actions taken by the IPF to prevent or mitigate the hazard. It should include a detailed description of the primary and secondary actions taken by the IPF. Identification of the equipment and control elements involved in each action. An explanation of how each action contributes to the prevention or mitigation of the hazard. Special Performance Requirements This section details any special performance requirements for the IPF. It should include 
identification of specific performance criteria, such as response times, reliability, and accuracy. An explanation of how these criteria are achieved and maintained. Identification of any additional testing or maintenance requirements to ensure performance. Reset actions. This section describes the actions required to reset the IPF after it has been activated. It should include identification of the reset procedure and any specific conditions that must be met before resetting. An explanation of any operator actions required to reset the IPF. Identification of any alarms or indications provided to the operator during the reset process. Remarks. This section provides any additional information or comments related to the IPF. It should include any assumptions or limitations associated with the IPF design and operation, identification of any interfaces with other control or protection systems, any other relevant information that may impact the performance or operation of the IPF. Additional requirements. This section outlines any further requirements or considerations necessary for the IPF. It should include compliance with relevant industry standards and regulations, documentation and reporting requirements, training and competency requirements for personnel involved in the operation and maintenance of the IPF, any specific requirements for integration with existing systems or infrastructure, provisions for periodic review and update of the IPF documentation to ensure ongoing relevance and effectiveness. The inclusion of these C-sections ensures that the IPF narrative is comprehensive and provides all necessary information for the design, implementation, operation, and maintenance of the instrumented protective function. Cause and Effect Diagrams The Cause and Effect Diagram C&E section shall contain the following Introduction Diagram Layout and Symbols Design Intent Functional Description cause and effect matrix, validation and testing. These sections are described in detail below. Introduction. This section provides an overview of the purpose and importance of cause and effect diagrams in the context of IPF narratives. It should include the role of C&E diagrams in identifying and documenting the relationships between causes, initiating events and effects, resultant actions. How C&E diagrams contribute to the safety and reliability of the process by ensuring that all potential hazards are addressed through appropriate IPFs. Diagram layout and symbols. This section describes the layout and symbols used in the cause and effect diagrams. It should include a detailed explanation of the standard symbols and notations used to represent causes, effects, and the relationships between them. Guidelines on how to read and interpret the diagrams, including any specific conventions or formatting used. An example diagram to illustrate the layout and symbols. Design intent. This section explains the design intent behind the CNE diagrams. It should include a description of the overall objectives of the CNE diagrams, such as identifying potential hazards and ensuring that appropriate IPFs are in place to mitigate them. An explanation of how the diagrams are developed and maintained, including the roles and responsibilities of the personnel involved in their creation and review. Functional Description This section provides a detailed functional description of the CNE diagrams. It should include a step-by-step -step explanation of how the diagrams are used to identify and document the relationships between causes and effects. Examples of typical causes, e.g. process deviations, equipment failures, and their associated effects, e.g. activation of safety systems alarms. An explanation of how the diagrams integrate with other process safety documentation, such as HAZOP studies and IPF narratives. Cause and effect matrix. This section details the cause and effect matrix, which forms the core of the CNE diagrams. It should include a table or matrix format that lists all potential causes and their corresponding effects. Specific details for each cause, including the initiating event, process parameters monitored, and any conditions that must be met. Specific details for each effect, including the actions taken, equipment involved, and any follow-up actions required. Validation and testing. This section outlines the procedures for validating and testing the CNE diagrams. It should include Guidelines for conducting validation reviews to ensure that all causes and effects are accurately documented and that the diagrams are complete. Procedures for testing the functionality of the IPFs described in the diagrams, including simulation or real-world testing as appropriate. 
requirements for periodic review and updates to the diagrams to ensure ongoing accuracy and relevance. The inclusion of these sections ensures that the cause and effect diagrams are comprehensive and provide all necessary information for the design, implementation, operation, and maintenance of the instrumented protective function. Alarm narratives. Alarm narratives shall be written for all alarms except trip alarms and pre-alarms. Pre-alarms and trip alarms shall not be included in the narratives. The alarm narratives shall describe the intent and anticipated operator action for all non-IPF related alarms. The purpose of the alarm narratives is to provide the base level information required for the alarm classification activity during the implementation phase of the project. Where a single measurement has more than one alarm setting, then separate narratives are required for each setting, e.g. A measurement with both high and low alarms requires one narrative for each setting, two in total. This is necessary as different operator actions are usually required for each setting. The following information shall be provided in the alarm narratives for each alarm as a minimum. Purpose of alarm. Describe the hazard or operating problem that the alarm is intended to warn of and what will cause the alarm to be activated, not simply high temperature and tank. Consequence of no action. Describe what is expected to happen if the alarm sounds and the operator takes no action or too late action in terms of safety, loss, and environmental impact, e.g. potential off-spec product due to degradation in tank. Type of activity. Describe the type of activity that should result from the alarm sounding, e.g. take corrective operational action, call maintenance, etc. A standard list of activity types shall be developed during the implementation phase of the project. Most likely required operator action. Describe what the operator most likely should do, 80% of the case, upon hearing the alarm. In some instances, the operator will be unable to do anything upon hearing an alarm. In these instances, the word nothing should be entered. In this case, the alarm should be an operational message only. Less likely required operator action. Describe what the operator less likely should do, 20% of the case, upon hearing the alarm. An example alarm narrative and format is given in Appendix 8. Examples of alarm narratives format. Timing of alarm narratives. The completion of the various sections that comprise the alarm narratives shall be in accordance with the table below. Item, timing, purpose of alarm, consequence no action. DEF, type of activity, most likely required operator action, less likely required operator action, IMPL, DEF definition phase, IMPL implementation phase. Additional documentation for interconnected control systems. This section describes the mandatory requirements included in, but additional to, the standard process control and IPF narratives for systems that comprise multiple interconnected subsystems, i.e. where control and safeguarding functionality is carried out in subsystems additional to the plant DCS and IPS. Such applications are typically found, for example, in rotating equipment, where one integrated control application is typically distributed across the following interconnected subsystems, turbine governor, e.g. Speedtronic, Woodward, etc. Compressor control systems, e.g. CCC, Triconex, etc. Special vendor PLC for variable speed drive motor, generator, auxiliary instrumentation, e.g. Bentley Nevada, Brule and Care, etc. Plant DCS, plant IPS, local panel, generator control panel, etc. Each subsystem shall be provided with separate vendor documentation that describes its own internals, as well as interfaces to the external world, in accordance with the relevant project documentation requirements. In addition, each integrated application that uses such interconnected subsystems shall be provided with additional documentation that ties together all the subsystem interconnections and describes them from an application perspective and in detail. The overall system architecture, the overall integrated functionality, Per application, this overview documentation shall be comprised of a functionality overview narrative and a functionality overview diagram. Both documents shall present the information in a manner useful to the end user and will most likely be different from and in addition to detailed project documents. The system integrator, normally the developer of the unit process control narrative, shall develop the functionality overview narrative. 
the overview narrative development shall not be delegated to a subsystem vendor. This functionality overview narrative shall form part of the process unit control narrative unless document size makes this impractical. A common format shall be used for functional overview diagrams throughout the project. The overview documentation shall be initially developed during the definition phase where possible and shall be continuously updated as project engineering progresses as detailed information becomes available from the various vendors, then after FAT and SAT of the systems, and eventually plant commissioning and startup. Functionality Overview Narrative The objective of a functionality overview narrative is to describe how the various subsystems are integrated into an application. It shall be used in conjunction with the functionality overview diagram. The functionality overview narrative shall provide a detailed overview of the application hardware, and describe the overall application control and safeguarding functionality in detail. The functionality overview narrative shall describe all signal flows during each phase of operation, i.e. startup sequencing, normal operation, normal shutdown and trip, and shall provide a top-down approach to the descriptions. The functionality overview narrative does not replace the individual subsystem documentation, but ties them all together and so shall refer to the relevant process control and IPF narrative documents for implementation details within each subsystem. All interconnecting control and safeguarding inputs and outputs between subsystems shall be described. This encompasses control, permissive, interlock, safeguarding signals and alarms that are not generated directly from field instruments. Functionality Overview Diagram for each integrated application, a functional overview diagram shall be developed which ties all the subsystems together. This detailed overview diagram shall show as a minimum the hardware architecture, i.e. all associated subsystems and packages, within each subsystem, functional blocks, e.g. startup sequence, trip sequence, control, etc. Each and every control and status signal between the interconnected subsystems shown connected to the relevant function blocks within the subsystem. Identification of each signal shall include signal type, e.g. analog, digital, communication, source destination and direction, tag number, function typically one to three words. This diagram shall be provided as a single sheet drawing. This will be large sized for complex applications. Detailed IPF Narratives The detailed IPF narrative shall describe the functionality and operational aspects of each individual protective function, whether standalone or part of a larger UZ block. Any specific individual implementation requirements, including those resulting from the IPF SIL assessment classification, shall be incorporated in Section 4 of the IPF Requirement Specification. The cause and effect diagram shall also be referenced. All IPF narratives shall be completed before plant startup. The detailed narrative shall include at least the following information. Objective, functional description, operational and implementation aspects, detailed logic sequence narrative and diagrams. Objective. This explains against which hazards the IPF protects. It shall include a description of the overall and individual safeguarding objectives, design intent i.e., it shall describe what is being safeguarded and why, giving the reasons. It is mandatory that each function be individually identified along with its design intent. This is singularly important for UZ blocks that contain different IPFs acting on the same final elements, as each IPF has different reasons for acting on the final elements or groups of final elements. Apart from capturing important IPF design information during the design stage, the data documented in the IPF narrative shall also serve as a precursor to the IPF classification reviews. It is intended that this data be directly copied from the IPF narrative into the IPF classification database, where it will serve as a starting point for the IPF classification's reviews. Functional Description this gives the method used to achieve the objectives of the initiating elements and actions taken by the IPF. The safeguarding logic overview and cause and effect diagrams should be referenced to illustrate the functionality together with the relevant PEFSs. Where multiple vendor subsystems are used, 
Section 4 of the IPF requirement specification shall include a description of how and where this safeguarding action is implemented. The following information shall be provided in the IPF narrative for each IPF as a minimum. A simple backflow protection IPF has been used as an example. Design intent. Identify the hazard to be protected against, e.g. prevent loss of containment due to overpressuring of the low pressure separator. Consequences of hazard. Describe what happens if the hazard occurs, e.g. rupture of low pressure separator vessel due to backflow from high pressure separator, explosion, etc. The following are expected to be included here. The likely realistic worst case ultimate consequence of the hazard and its extent e.g. whether there will be a gentle fire, an intense fire or jet fire, an explosion, etc., whether just minor fire damage results, or if everything burns down and the shed collapses, etc., the effect on personnel if they are around, and the likely sequence of events leading to the consequence, what kind of places the leaks can occur, flanges, broken line, etc., where the material will leak to, drop to ground and spreads, or vaporizes, catches fire before hitting the ground, etc., etc., the consequences need to be considered from three standpoints. Refer to EP 32.80.10.10, section 3.2.61, personnel safety, production and equipment loss, and impact on environment and reputation. Demand scenario. Describe the conditions that will cause the hazard to occur, and that will demand the IPF action, e.g. failure of flow controller or pump. Part of the objective of describing the demand scenario is for the IPF classification team during EPC to be able to judge the likely frequency of this IPF being triggered. The demand scenario should provide the background information to be able to judge this. It is important to indicate here which, if any, controller failure could possibly lead to this. Detection of hazard initiators. Describe how the hazard is detected, e.g. 10 FZA001, feed flow to high pressure separator, and 10 PDZA001, differential pressure across flow control station. Success criteria. For functions with multiple initiating elements, describe what constitutes success of detecting the hazard. This is intended for multiple initiators measuring the same hazard but in different manners, e.g. backflow detected by FZA LL and PDZA LL. Note, initiators can only be grouped together into one IPF if they detect the same hazard and back each other up. Final elements. Hazard mitigation actions. Describe the process action required to mitigate the hazard and the final elements used to achieve this, e.g. isolate the high pressure separator from the low pressure separator. Final elements. List the final elements used to mitigate the hazard, e.g. close isolation valve UZV101 and close high pressure separator feed valve 10FCV001. Success criteria. For functions with multiple final elements, describe what constitutes success of the mitigation actions, e.g. at least one valve closed. For multiple final elements, the success criterion must be stated, i.e. how many of the final elements must work correctly for the hazard to be successfully mitigated, averted. Must all valves work correctly to mitigate the hazard, or will only one or two suffice? Describe here how many and which ones have to work correctly, and identify which may provide only partial mitigation, and identify the extent of mitigation provided if not all final elements mitigate to the same extent. Primary actions, actions that mitigate the hazard. Secondary actions, actions that do not mitigate the hazard, but assist the operator to recover from the IPF, allow him to restart quicker, or preemptively trip upstream or downstream equipment, as the effect of this IPF will cause it to trip also. Further examples of this are shown in Appendix 7, Example of an IPF Narrative. Additional Requirements In addition to the above, the following shall be described for each IPF. A definition of the safe state of the process for each IPF, e.g., inventory vented by valve opening, rundown shutoff by valve closure. An overview of the IPFs required to achieve the required risk reduction. A description of the modes of operation of the facility, e.g., startup, shutdown, automatic, manual, foreseeable abnormal conditions, and the IPF required to be operational in each mode. Some IPFs may be mode specific and not apply in all modes. This should be specified. The functional relationship between the inputs and outputs, 
This should include logical, mathematical, and permissive relationships, as well as requirement for manual shutdown and manual reset functions. In practice, this will be captured in the cause and effect diagrams and any functional logic diagrams if generated. Any calculations required by an IPF shall be documented in a separate section of the IPF narrative, see Appendix 5, IPF narrative structure, to the same detail and extent as calculations used for control, see Appendix 1, process control narrative structure. The process safety time for process outputs and other special requirements where applicable, e.g. TSO, stroking time. The response time requirements to bring the process to the safe state. Requirements for manual reset, maintenance override, operational override, startup override, and manual shutdown per function. Note that Sciela 2 functions also require a MOS. The failure modes of the IPF, e.g. thermocouple burnout, and the associated desired responses. Maintenance override grouping. This can be conveniently shown on the cause and effect matrix by placing the initiators in group sequence order and highlighting each group, e.g. by a border or other means. Special alarm features, e.g. re-alarming. Alarm and trip settings shall not be included in the IPF narrative but shall be recorded in the NTools database. Additional requirements. Complex UZ blocks. The following are additional requirements for the structure and descriptions within the narrative of more complex UZ blocks. IPFs shall be described in the top-down order of the Safeguarding Logic Overview Diagram. HZ and unit trip actions, final elements, shall be segregated into isolation from other units, compartmentalization within the unit, shut off heat sources, stop rotating equipment, etc., as appropriate to each case. For pump protection IPFs, the IPFs for all pumps in the same service, i.e. AB pumps, shall be combined into one UZ block. This simplifies associated controller initialization and IPF classification. Equipment shall be referred to in all instances by number and service description. When describing an action, i.e. what a final element does, first describe the effect on the process and then how this is achieved, e.g. stop reflux flow by closing 12FC1223 or FC manual output then percent, etc. So. Operational and implementation aspects. This section relates to any specific implementation details and operational aspects of the IPF scheme. It includes any IPF-related calculations. It shall be prepared during the definition phase to the extent that data is available. Remaining implementation details will be completed during the implementation phase. Attention needs to be paid in splitting implementation descriptions between IPF requirements specification sections 1 and 4. In addition, for IPF-related timers, this section shall contain the reason for the timer, whether it should be visible to and adjustable by the operator, and the rationale behind the setting. The actual timer setting shall reside within the Intools database. Detailed logic, sequence narrative, and diagrams. This section of the narrative shall describe any complex logic or sequence functionality system implemented in the IPS. It shall be prepared during the definition phase to the extent that data is available. Remaining implementation details will be completed during the implementation phase. A complex scheme functionality is one that cannot be discerned from the PEFs or note on the cause and effects diagrams. Functional logic diagrams, FLD, shall be produced to clearly specify any such special logic. For IPF sequences, sequence function charts and pseudo-English code shall be used as defined in section 4.4.4.